Hi, everybody. It is time for our first astronomy lab. So let's talk about how our lab's going to work. You are taking a lab course online. And how is that? Yeah, how are we going to operate that? Well, all of our labs are going to involve typically three things. One, something that I'm going to ask you to build or construct at home. And it's going to involve common household objects, um, tape, string, um, something round, and it can usually be a wad of socks or a wadded up piece of bread. There's a lot of versatility, and we'll go through a list of that in just a minute. Um, secondly, online computer simulations, and there's some great computer simulations out of some major universities, and we're going to use those. And then thirdly, you're going to do a lot of drawing and sketching because the mind learns really well by, by that tactile act of drawing. So I'm going to have you do that. Sometimes in lab, I'm going to ask you to take selfies of yourself with some of the things you've built as proof that you actually built them because by it's the act of doing that helps you learn the material and those selfies need to be uploaded when you upload the lab. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to go through the equipment list a little bit so you kind of have a clue of what things you're going to need in the future. We're going to talk about lab number one and talk about the software that you need to download. So first off, let's go through that equipment list. Um, this list is included in that packet from the bookstore. Things that you're going to need for the class. The only specific special piece of equipment that you were asked to buy is that planisphere. Um, everything else is common household things. Ruler, tape, string, rubber bands, push pins. And I want to give you options. For example, if I say you need tape, um, you can very often use masking tape, scotch tape, glue tape, or duct tape. I, so when I say tape, I mean tape. I mean, there's a lot of variety that you can use. Um, rubber bands, and sometimes if you don't have rubber bands, string can be used, a hair elastic. So there's variety. And science involves being creative. So if you don't happen to have exactly the one thing I mentioned, be creative. And I'm not only good with that, I'm excited to see creative people exercising their creative muscles. That's pretty nifty. Do you need a printer? You do not need printer access. If you bought the packet from the bookstore, then you've got everything that you need. Um, Play-Doh, you can use squished up things like a hamburger bun or a piece of bread. So again, be creative. There's not just one way to actually get things done. The other thing that you're going to be asked to purchase eventually through the class is an astronomy app for your phone or your tablet. Now, if you already have one or two, cool. I will give you some suggestions of some of my favorite astronomy apps, but you may have some that are better, or by the time the video is launched here and the class is going on, a better one might come out. But you will need one of these for a lab later in the semester. Everything else, common household things, and that's going to be pretty useful stuff. So nothing special except for that uh, planisphere and an astronomy app somewhere along the line. So let's talk about software that you are being asked to download. Well, there is, um, if we go to our course and we go to astronomy lab number one, within the lab itself, there's going to be some some uh, online simulations. And those simulations, you are actually going to have to once download this astronomy simulation software. And I can't spell software, obviously, right there. So if you click on that, that is going to give you the instructions on how to download this software. And somewhere I've got those instructions. Hold on, where are they? Um, how to download the software. And if you click on that, how to download the software instructions, um, it actually takes you to the University of Nebraska at Lincoln. That's where we're getting the software from. It is a reputable source. And that link will take you to this place. Now, when you go there, you're going to have two choices. You will either download it for Windows if you have a Microsoft or Windows based machine, or you are going to download it for Mac if you have an Apple or Mac based machine. What you want is class action, class action, class action. These are big files. There are, they are almost 98 megabytes 
And so each one of these is relatively big on my slow DSL internet connection. It took about 12 minutes for me to download each one of these files. So don't be impatient, but you are going to definitely have to have to download the simulation software. You definitely have to have a, a good internet connection for less than 15 minutes. But once you have it, you have it. And you never have to download the software again throughout the rest of the semester. Now I'm going to talk turkey and be real blunt with you here. That software is going to be used on almost every lab between now and the end of the semester. That software does not work on an iPhone or an iPad. Um, IT and I have both tried numerous times to make it work. So you are going to have to access a real computer. It can be a Windows machine or a Mac machine, but you are going to have to access a real computer to do those sections of the lab. You can't do everything for your lab on your phone. You're going to have to get to a real computer for those simulations. But download the software once and you're going to be in good shape. The instructions will show you exactly where to click, 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 download, click here, what to open, when to click next. It tells you when to breathe out, when to, in, and when to install. And you will get a little action, um, icon like this that will, I put it on my desktop and it is right there. And once you have that little icon on your desktop, all of the software for all the simulations all semester long you will have in-house on your computer and you're good and you never have to do that again. All right now let's talk about this week's lab. Our lab this week you're going to do three big things. One I want you to build a scale model of the solar system that is accurate to size and distance between the planets. My purpose in this is I want you to truly understand how big things are and the vast distances between planets and stars are. You are going to need something round to represent the sun. Uh, you could use an orange, a tennis ball, a basketball, a pair of socks, whatever. Hint, the larger the thing you start with, the larger your entire model is going to be. So please don't pick something that is three feet across. You're going to have big, big distances between your planets. When you pick out your object, you're going to measure that diameter. So you're going to need a ruler of some sort. Um, I don't care if you measure it in inches or centimeters or in meters. Now, if you are going to use the metric system for the software I'm sending you to, you're going to want millimeters. The ruler I'm showing you here, the big numbers, zero, one, two, three, those are centimeters. The millimeters are the little squidges in between. So these, there are 10 little millimeters, another 10, another, that would be 30 millimeters, 40 millimeters, 50. So Pick either inches or the metric system to measure the diameter of your round object. Then you're going to click here and it's going to take you to a website that is going to make sure I get my choices here on website. Is it there? Uh, bah, 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 I thought I had the website open. Um, and it, that website is going to allow you to type in the diameter of the ball. Yeah, let's see if I've got that website open. Where is it? Build a solar system model. There it is. Um, you can either type in the diameter of your sun in inches or in millimeters. So let's say you built, you put in the diameter is one inch. It will, and then you hit calculate, it will tell you the distant, the diameter then of every other planet relative to the sun. Now this is one inch in diameter. It will also tell you how far apart the distance from the sun to Mercury, the sun to Venus, the sun to the Earth, over here on this side. Please either use inches, and then if you use inches, use feet and inches, or use metric millimeters and meters. Okay, pick one or the other, don't do both. Big hint, if you use the inches side, you have to have the distances in feet and inches. So for example, if you have a one inch sun, the earth is going to be eight feet, 11 inches, not quite nine feet away from your planet sun. 
The reason why I'm making a big deal about the fact you have to use feet and inches is because very often I've had students who just use the inches, forget about the feet, and they're, they do not get a good grade on, grade on this because their model looks silly. So make sure that you copy that down correctly. You're gonna, the website's gonna do all the math. You are simply going to copy it back over here and remember either do inches and feet and inches or do the gray boxes, millimeters and meters. Now to give you an idea of what this looks like, I built a model where I used a tangerine for the sun. When I did the math, Jupiter was about the size of the head of a pin. Here's some pictures I took. There's my fingers, there's my Jupiter, and there's my darling husband standing out there holding the sun down by the barn. And that's the kind of scale you're talking about. So the smaller your sun, the smaller your scale model is going to be. And you're going to take some selfies when you're all done with this. You're going to include one selfie of your fabulous face, your model sun, and all of your five inner planets. So you can do this all, everything sitting on your palm or on the kitchen counter with everybody labeled and another selfie like the ones I showed you with your model sun, your model Jupiter and at, and you, and it could just be your fingers to show that you have this built to scale. Questions about taking this further. Do you understand if we scaled this whole thing up, where would, how far away would the next closest star be? Okay, part two, naked eye observing. In the videos, we talked about measuring things with angles and using our body as measurement tools. Here's a collection of questions. The answers are in the videos about those angles. These are the angle measuring devices, your fingers and your fists. Use that information. Go stand someplace in your yard or your neighborhood and I want you to measure using your hands and fingers I want you to measure a close tree, a far away tree, a close car, and a far away tree, the width and its height. And if the moon is visible, put its width and height above the horizon. And if the moon is not visible, you just write not visible in there. Last part, plane of the ecliptic. One of the note sets for this week, we talked about the plane of ecliptic. It is a good point of reference for all astronomers. So you need to start knowing the constellations on that ecliptic plane because we refer to them often. These are the 13 ecliptic constellations. Here's that little mnemonic of device to help you remember them. I want you to write those down. Uh, a little reminder what people thought they looked like to help them remember them. And then I want you to go download that class action software once you have you open it up, go to animations, go click on all animations, click there to all animations, and you're going to go to the Zodiac, Zodiac Ecliptic Simulator, Zodiac Ecliptic Simulator, and when you open it up, it's going to look like this. You're going to maneuver this plane of the ecliptic around, and you're going to visualize what the solar system is going to look like from the position of Earth on different months, different times of the year and answer these questions. When you're all done, you save this file, include your selfies, upload it for a grade, and you'll have lab number one done. All right, have a fabulous week. As questions evolve, please contact me and we'll figure them out. All right, take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.